Hi and welcome to this quick little tutorial on how to get the most out of your Garmin. So if you've just got it or if you've had it for a few months like me, then you might want to know if you're missing any features or if you just want to set the phone, the watch up, it is really quite simple. So I'm not going to go through the obvious things. There's the light switch, there's the run switch, there's the menu button and the scroll button and there's the back button. So it's kind of like a really old, well not really old, probably like a Nokia 3310, something like that. So then if you want to run and I found this a lot, sometimes if it's really struggling for signal and I just want, I've left my stopwatch at home and I just want to get running then I press that button there and it's like do you want to use GPS I say no and then it just goes onto timer mode so at the very least I can use it to time my reps or whatever or just say go for a half hour run and just sacrifice it because if, if it's pouring down with rain and I've not left it on the windowsill and I've not had time then that, that is a good save and a top tip so we'll just get on to see how do you get onto the menu you get into the menu there with that button and the first menu that comes up is the run options so you've got the run and walk feature you've got the virtual pacer feature so obviously to turn these on and off you just go on there and at the moment this one's turned off so it's giving you the option to turn it on I don't want to turn it on no I don't but there's obviously you'd select it so that the mo if I did that it'd be run for 30 so at the moment it's set for run for 30 walk for 30 but obviously I don't need that so I'll turn that off so now, as you can see, it's turned off. Virtual pacer, so this is where it tells you if you're set within this virtual pace and tells you off if you're not. Basically there, so I'll go on that. Don't want to turn it on, yes. And then you set your minutes. I believe this is a minutes per mile. I've not really used this much because it does shout at you a lot if you're a bit out. And then you just click set and then you're good to go. and also you can edit the pace whilst it's turned on so then laps auto lap is basically this watch does not do reps or anything you cannot program reps into it so what it means by auto lap is after every lap which is one mile it beeps and tells you how far you've gone and obviously if you don't want that you can turn it off but I find it really useful especially to motivate you so next you've got auto pause which personally I've turned off it's good for the city but I found if you run on the track or if you just stop for a few seconds, especially when you're going on the long runs and stuff and your pace isn't that fast, it does take a while automatically to restart. So you should look down on your watch and it's not timing and that does get quite annoying, especially if you're doing reps. But if you're in the city, I would recommend turning it on. Then there's a data field, so you can set whatever page you want. So at the moment, my first page is time and distance, so I'd choose that. Then what do you choose? Then you've obviously got two pages to choose at the moment. I've got speed and calories. And personally, I would recommend these because they do give you a good overview. And then you can obviously, when you scroll through the watch, you can just go on the time. So if you're not that bothered about what you're doing, and you just set off at 12 30, 12 30, then you can just keep track of time. And then it's your pace or speed. So for the speed on the watch, you can either choose the pace, the lap pace, or the average pace. And personally, I choose the pace, so that when, I, when I look at the data screens and it's got pace, it's the pace that I'm running at at that specific moment, not the lap pace and not the average pace in the race. Or, I have seen, if you're going to use this for cycling, I would recommend changing it to speed, and then put your units in miles per hour, so it does give you the, the speed that you're going at at that moment in time, which I found is really useful. So that's the run options sorted. There's not really that many, it's hard to go wrong. So then you've got your history, so you can just scroll through your runs. And then you've got the settings itself. So obviously you can set an alarm. Choose change the tones whether you want them on or off. I use them on for most of it because it's good to know, especially every lap or so. That's why I have the lap function turned on. It's good to know that your watch is still alive, it's still tracking you. Then you obviously put your weight in to change the calories burned. And then there's the setup. So you can change the time, the language, and the units. And I like to keep mine in kilometres, but if I'm going for a bike ride, I'll usually change it to miles per hour so I know how fast I'm going. And don't forget to change your bike ride to cycling when you log into Garmin, or else you'll have some mad records popping up. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this setup. I hope it's helped you if you've missed any things on this watch that you didn't know how to use, or possibly didn't know were there. And if I've missed anything, please let me know, because I'm always learning as well. So yeah, thanks for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.